Though Luther was the first translator of the Bible out of the West to have success and to see many printed versions and updates of his translation over the years, he was not the only person to attempt it. Before Luther, an English-speaking scholar named John Wycliffe had become frustrated with the practices of the Roman Church, and he deemed many of those practices as being directly contradictory to the biblical teachings. He translated the texts from the Latin Vulgate into English, and then gained a following of others who agreed with his observations. His movement wouldn't really last very long, as one of the theologians that he had a great influence on, a Czech theologian named John Huss, would be burned at the stake for teaching against indulgences and various other accusations that the Roman church threw at him. During Huss's trial, both his and Wycliffe's writings were read as indictments against him. After Luther successfully translated and printed copies of a full German Bible based off of Erasmus's Greek New Testament, other, Greek, other English reformers got to work on another English translation. One scholar and reformer was William Tyndale. Tyndale attempted to translate the entire Bible into English from the original languages. He never really fully finished the translation, but taking full advantage of Luther's momentum and the printing press, Tyndale's Bible became popular among the people of England. Many more English translations were created in the next 100 years in England, including the Great Bible, which was officially authorized by the English church, which was newly formed, separating from the Roman church. Another was the Geneva Bible, named for the city of exile that the translators had fled to during their own Reformation attempts in England. By the 17th century, many more protests came against those early translations for their errors. After King James came to power, he commissioned a new translation to take into, account, into consideration some of these points of contention and the early work of the first translators and the newer scholarship on the original biblical languages. The scholars were not free to translate as they saw fit since the royalty also had problems with anti-imperial sentiment written into the margin notes of those earlier translations. The King James Bible of 1611 was born, but also it was updated multiple times along the way to standardize spellings and, and also the grammar of the English language as it was developing. The Bible continued to be translated into the various languages of the world elsewhere, all over Europe especially. Eventually, Christian missionaries of the 19th and 20th centuries would lean on the work of previous missionaries to translate the good news of Jesus to the cultures that they found themselves in. And they began to create new endeavors to use translation as a tool alongside modern mission work. The Bible now exists in almost 700 languages. Portions of the biblical texts have been translated into over 3,000 different languages. And that num number continues to grow. Both those numbers continue to grow. What are we to think of all those translations today? In some ways, this makes the Bible unique among ancient texts. Very few other ancient texts have that many translations. It also makes it unique among religious texts, as many other major world religions do not authorize translations as authoritative in the way that modern Christian groups do. When their texts are translated, they are seen as inferior, and people are encouraged rather to learn and study the original texts. The legacy of the Bible has its advantages and drawbacks. For one thing, the theological belief that the message of the Bible and the good news of Jesus is for the entire world. And this important doctrine has led to the church in various times and places seeing the message and not the exact words written in some of the languages of the time as the most important thing. This has also led to many factions and divisions of Christianity as each culture and time grapples with what the Bible means to their people and their time. So who really knows if the way the Bible has been passed down is a good thing 
or a bad thing in opening up to many translations, but it is what we have and we can learn from it too as we seek to read the Bible for ourselves.